Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Lakers got game two tonight against the Nuggets in Denver at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, and um, we got work to do. I mean, it's, it's very simple. We're going up against a team that has beaten us nine straight times at this point, including the Western Conference Finals in regular season. Um, last year, this year, every year it seems right now, it just seems like a never-ending cycle of the same uh, loop we see a nice lead in the first half and then we give it up in the second half and in the final few minutes of the game they just run the score up and pull away I mean it's literally the same game over and over again basically with the exception of the one game that we played to start the season uh, the schedule makers and maybe the basketball gods has it so that we've played this team in a bunch of very key celebratory games uh, bronze breaking of the 4,000, 40,000, I think, uh, scoring record was against the Nuggets. Uh, Kobe's night for his statue was against the Nuggets. And they've just really um, destroyed every good opportunity we've had to celebrate. And it just so happens that it was them that we would see. Uh, of course, their ring night, we were available there. We got beat on that night. I mean, it's just, and those were the only three times we saw them. Um, they've called themselves Laker daddy, etc. It's just a lot, a whole lot for the Laker uh, fan base and, and the team and everybody uh, to absorb. And we really need to get over this hump. Win the series, lose the series. You can't get swept. We can't continue to keep losing this to this team in the same way. It, at some point, you just start realizing that, um, you know, it's it's deeper than just basketball you you really gotta get over the hump mentally um and deliver us from 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 this disrespect is what i would say so that's what i'm saying to the team man i don't know if tonight's the night we'll get the win i don't know if we'll just see the same game again at this point when you talk about nine in a row as i said in my last uh reaction video this wasn't a fluke it's not a fluke it's something that they have under control they figured us out and we need to um try something that we haven't tried uh to 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 get out of this funk against this this unit um they're not mind readers so we just have to do some things differently obviously matchups work in their favor but even when matchups work in your favor a team should get lucky once in a while at least we should be able to at least win some of these matchups especially since we have leads in all of them um it's just about win and what are you doing throughout the course of giving that lead back um they're not turning into werewolves in the second half. They're not uh, able to play more than five players on the floor in the second half. Whatever you're doing in the first half should be doable in the second half. And that's really my point of view. Uh, giving up leads, a lot of what happened in the first game was just us turning the ball over uh, in key moments and then losing our way. Uh, they didn't run plays in the second half, things of that nature. You just can't let that happen. And if you do let that happen, you got to expect the results to be the same. So I understand the Lakers have to play perfect ball, but a lot of that, even in that, it's psychological. What you got to do is just continue to run plays in the second half as you did in the first half. Trust your offense and, and lean on it. Um, when you start playing sloppy, when you start forcing shots, when you start, uh, you know, doing things that ultimately hurt you, you're going to be beaten by a team that capitalizes on your mistakes. This isn't the first team that we've seen that specializes in capitalizing on people's mistakes. Um, you just got to play good ball against them and, 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 and get them in foul trouble and things of that nature. Rebound the ball. Put yourself in a position to rebound the ball. And a lot of what Coach Ham does uh, is put us in a position to be too small to do so. And so as a result, nine straight times they've been able to overcome us. And it's on him to start changing his ways. If you get beat nine times in a row by the same damn team, you really do have to get away from certain things that you love to do so that you can get different results. You know what I mean? Nine times, fam. And and, and that all of those times were under Coach Ham. So at some point in time, you got to look at Mike Malone and say, you figured out Coach Ham, and that's really where we're at. Um, and Coach Ham has to figure himself out so he can do some things that you haven't seen or do some things that you can't stop. And, and that's really what it comes out to. 
I look at that a lot of the times. So when it's a nine straight, look, you know, situation, it becomes the the puzzle game between the coaches. And and I just think that when it comes to Mike Malone, he didn't figure it out. Darvin Ham uh, as it pertains to controlling these two rosters, and Darvin Ham has certain tendencies that he likes to go to when it comes to using this roster that that just needs to change man they just need to change and so hopefully he, those changes come tonight he said he had a few things up his sleeve that he wanted to use uh that haven't been done yet he wanted to, to save his some of his better um adjustments as the series progresses um hey man i guess that makes sense i don't know I really don't know, but I do know you need to find a way to get a win early in the series or it's going to be early. We gone. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, D'Lo Russell had a bad shooting night. He wants to stick with D'Lo, played him 41 minutes on a bad shooting night. You don't do that. You don't do that. You know what I mean? And I understand that he feels like he might lose the kid. Last year, he benched him early in the series, and it was necessary. He was playing bad, couldn't keep up with the matchups on the other end. You know what I mean? It's like... If you're waiting on D'Lo to go for 40, if he has to go for five for three straight games so you can get that out of him, we're going to be gone before that 40 comes around. And because we have different options this year that we believe we should be able to go to, Spencer Dinwiddie, Gabe Vincent, Max Christie, you would think that we would, um, you know, at least play D'Lo reasonable minutes. We don't play him 41 minutes in the regular damn season. But you're going to wait until he has a bad game in the playoffs and want to play him 41 minutes? I mean, these are the type of things that I just, I think Coach Ham shouldn't do. And um, that's really what it comes down to. I really think we're misusing uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. He's a, a solid to good point guard when he has the ball in his hands. And when we've put the ball in his hands, good things have happened. Um, and I just think that coach has neglected to do that for, for a number of reasons that I probably don't know, but I do know that we're leaving a lot of production on the board by not utilizing Spencer Dinwiddie. Now Spencer Dinwiddie can come and go. He's a, he's just like d in that way. Sometimes you, it works out. Other times he does nothing, but a lot of times with our system, he only attempts like three shots off the bench. And that is under utilizing his capability. Um, same thing with, in a different way with Rui Hachimura, as we've mentioned many times. Rui Hachimura is shooting 50% from the field and only attempts four shots. You know what I'm saying? And then we got D'Lo attempted 20 shots. I just, on a cold night? No, no. And you wonder why Mike Malone continues to beat us, man. These are the type of things that Mike ain't going to have. He ain't going to have no problem with these type of situations. That's not going to happen on his side. His players are more reliable. And he's, he uses a lot more uh, conventional sense in regards to his to utilizing his roster. He's not overthinking it. He's not looking for certain things to help coddle a guy's mind so he doesn't lose them. You're going to lose the series. You know what I mean? While you're trying to keep these players, you know, feeling confident about themselves as they continue to shoot us out of basketball games. If a guy's cold, you got other options. Go to somebody else. One guy confidence goes down, another guy confidence goes up. I mean, you know, you can't make everybody happy. You certainly can't. Uh, you know, massage a cold mind, you know, when it comes to somebody shooting the ball cold and not playing well, uh, at the detriment of, of everybody else. The bad is going to continue to play bad, and the good is going to continue to sit, not helping you. That just, you know, what are you willing to give up? That's always the, the puzzle for, for Darvin Ham. He's always willing to give up the wrong stuff. What are you leaving open while you believing in your gut? You want to play Torian Prince, but he's only going to be able to do certain things. You're leaving players on the bench that can help you. What are you willing to give up? And so because he answers that question in ways that hurt us a lot of the time, we end up losing. And uh, I think that had a lot to do with it. Also, you know, LeBron James, the same thing you do in the first half has to be the same thing you do in the second half, brother. I can't have you kicking tail and, and driving in the paint, doing all this wonderful stuff in the first half, and in the second half, you don't want to shoot the ball. It doesn't work. You know, if you're too tired, retire, bro. That's it. But as far as, you know, that that attitude he had in the fourth quarter where he only attempted one shot, whatever causes that needs to go away, man. Needs to go away. You going up against the Nuggets, bro, you, it doesn't work. Whatever you're trying to do there, that ain't gonna that ain't gonna leave you no closer 
to to beating this basketball team. You got to do what you did in the first half and the second half. Anthony Davis, same thing. You know, you guys are, are too decorated, going to be in the Hall of Fame right away. I don't know what the hell happened in the third quarter of that game, but I will not forget it. I will not forget it because at the end of the day, we collapsed completely mentally on on uh, Saturday in the fourth, in the third quarter. And we started shooting bad threes, started turning the ball over, stopped running plays. Run plays. If a team can't beat you when you run plays, then run plays. If you're worried about them figuring those plays out, understand that you ain't figured out how to play without those plays. So run them and make them beat you, man. Don't go into to street mode on a basketball floor against the Denver Nuggets. They're too disciplined. They're too good. They're going to beat you. And so I don't, I don't know how much patience uh, we'll be able to muster for this series if another game goes the same way. At some point, the bottom is going to fall out of people's confidence. We already feel defeated before this even started because we have to match up against this team that we had lost to eight straight times, and then we come in and lose game one the same way we lost the last eight. I mean, it just gets to a point where it's like, yo, we feel defeated. And we need our team to, to be better than that mentality in order to overcome what's in front of them. And if they don't, then we just look at them the way that, that it looks when you keep getting beat by the same team. People say you're, you know, not not that. You know, however you want to face it, you're just not going to be respected. And that's ultimately what I'm asking for the team to gain. So tonight they have an opportunity to win a game. You're not going to be the Denver Nuggets in this series if you don't win on the road at some point. You have to win your home games, but you definitely have to get one in Denver. Mathematically, you have to get one in Denver. So let this be the one you get. Obviously, with regular playoff series, that this is not, given the circumstances psychologically. But in most situations, what you're trying to do is get the split if you're the road team. You just want to win one. And then when you win one, you want to go home and you want to take care of business. That's it. It, nothing's changed. You lost game one. Okay, let's get in game two. And we'll still be on track for what it is that most series are about for the road team. So I'm hopeful that our team can find it in themselves to overcome. Obviously, the matchups don't work in their favor. But we're going to need a little help from the Denver Nuggets. Not hitting every dang shot. We're going to need a little help from the referees. And, and we're going to have to hit our free throws. All these different things. When you're not the better team, you need some luck. So hopefully we can we can find a way to uh, to do our part and see what happens. But um, losing game two is going to probably make the bottom fall out of this series, man. I'm just going to be honest with you. We really do have to win a game on the road, and it has to come early. We got to start seeing some success against the Denver Nuggets, and uh, it's going to be incumbent upon people to do things that work and keep doing them. And that's that's what it is. And if, as long as we continue to have Rui shooting four shots, D'Lo playing almost the entire game when he's cold, um, you know, stuff like that, you, you're going to get beaten. You're going to get beaten by a team that's not going to make those type of mistakes. You're going to get beaten by a team that won a championship last year. So that's really what it is, man. Until we start approaching the Denver Nuggets like they're the champions and stop, you know, approaching them like they are going to just let us win after we get a 10-point lead. Until we start playing intelligent basketball and coaching intelligent basketball, you're not going to beat an intelligent basketball team. <laughs> it's the same thing I used to feel about going up against the Spurs when I was a kid. If, if you don't treat these Denver Nuggets like the Spurs, uh, you're going to get beaten just like the Spurs would have beaten us. It was intelligent basketball and willful basketball uh, and, 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 and winning some of those 50-50 matchups and things of that nature that got us over the hump against that team and um, I liken this to the Utah Jazz when Utah used to beat us every year but even Utah didn't dominate like this this is different this is this is much much worse in, in, in many ways so that's what it is man nine straight losses same damn team bro I'm tired of this I think everybody in Laker Nation is sick of this and we have opportunities to get over the hump in this series and we need to gain our respect uh, if this team can do so if, if they're capable of, of, of garnering that from Mike Malone and the Nuggets. So that's really what it is, man. It's got off to a very demoralizing start against a team that we were already demoralized against. A lot of our players, in my opinion, look demoralized, and it's incumbent upon them to, to, to be professionals. Um, we don't pay you to not believe. We pay you to play ball. So get out there and play ball 
and do it to the level that, that you would are expected to be. You're an expert, you know what I mean? And you're in a league uh, of the best. So we expect the best from you um, because there are many people who would love to be in your position who may not be good enough or who didn't get the opportunities. Maybe injuries robbed them or they opportunities or whatever. And they would do a damn good job right now of seizing the moment. So I suggest that y'all respect the situation you're in and seize that moment if you've been blessed enough with the talent and the health to be down there. There's many dreamers who need need your opportunity and ain't going to get it. And so that's what I would say to every NBA player everywhere. This Laker team, Nuggets, everybody. That's really what it is, man. And so, yeah, man, that's what I got to say. Um, the Lakers are going to be wearing yellows tonight, yellow tonight, and the Nuggets will be wearing their black alternate uh, jerseys. I think they have an alternate floor, 58, 20 or something like that, whatever that says, 54, 20. I don't remember the number, but um, that's what they're going to be wearing tonight. <laughs> and uh, we need to find a way to get a victory against them. And... Um, if we don't, it ain't going to be positive thoughts. It ain't going to be happy thinking. It ain't going to be none of that. We're going to be pointing out what's wrong, and we'll be expecting two more losses to send us home. And then we're going to be talking about in the offseason how we're not good enough to win and, and, and how we would uh, need to, to get better if, if we don't want to continue on this path of getting slapped around by by certain teams. And we don't. And, and I'm not trying to, you know, put people down before the series is over, but there are going to be some things that have to really change. Even if we win the series, we still have some things that we need to improve upon. But if we if we get swept out of here and we can't get a single game against the Denver Nuggets, believe you me, man, it's going to be a long offseason for the L.A. Lakers. It's going to be a long offseason. <laughs> Conversations are not going to be good. Certain people are going to fall off the bandwagon. Certain, you know what I mean? People are going to start looking at this like, okay, man, we're wasting our time. These guys ain't it. And so that's the respect they need to not let come their way. They need to be able to to gain uh, reverence from the from the fans and and from the the Denver Nugget fans specifically who are saying who's your daddy and all types of different stuff. We need to start gaining your respect. You could you could go up against a team um, that's better than you and, and put up a better show than what we showed in these last nine games against them. We could do that. I've seen teams do that just because you not better than the team don't mean you can't compete you should not be getting dominated by anybody in this league to this degree nobody no team should be getting dominated like this you know i'm saying even the portland trailblazers shouldn't you lose no damn nine straight to a single team that should never happen man so we're in we're in uncharted territory it's it's uh demoralizing and, 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 and deflating and beneath us and we want the people in our uniform to respect the colors they're wearing go out there and play like they're supposed to play You know, if this were a super dominant matchup against us, then why the hell do we have leads in every one of these games? That's what someone needs to explain to me. How we end up with 10-point leads against this team but still can't win a single game against them? It's psychological. And we need the people down there who are getting paid millions of dollars to play basketball to get their psyche in order and and, and demand our respect once again, man. That's, That's where I'm at with it. So, um, you know, it's less about X's and O's for me. It's more about effort and, 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 and demanding of oneself to get over the hump against a team that you can find pockets at a time where you're up by 11 and 12 against <laughs> every game. So that's really what it comes down to. If we were getting beat by 50 or 60 points, it's a different, that's a different conversation. But that's not what's happening. You just get you have a formula being pressed against you, and you, you haven't been able to figure it out. And if I'm being real with you, I don't think it's all that difficult to figure out. I really don't. Put size on the floor to rebound the ball. That's what we've neglected to do for 48 minutes. You run offensive plays that work more and and take advantage of of opportunities to to beat this team where you can. And and we we get away from stuff like that. We, We play down and, you know, our lineups sometimes are are without. Uh, you know, thought it seems honestly, it just seems like we just toss players on the floor sometimes when things get get rough. We we unravel, and that unraveling is not a sign of us not being able to compete. It's a sign of us not being uh, confident in our willingness and our ability to compete. And that that quite honestly, at this level, um, is unacceptable. 
It really is. So I know I sound harsh. Obviously, I would need to perform in my area of life to, to, to make it make sense. And if I weren't, I would expect this type of criticism. But um, we're talking about a certain level of, of domination and ineptitude um, that, 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 that is uh, offensive, quite honestly, to Laker fans for the experiences of, of success that we've had and, and, and the type of minds that we've had running our organization for the last 30 years and, uh, you know, guys in uniform that have competed this is like this is not acceptable it's just not acceptable and so that's what it really comes down to man i go all the way back to eddie jones and nick van axel eddie jones and nick van axel wouldn't have gotten beaten nine straight times by the same damn team bro i'm just being honest with you this is before kobe this is after magic we ain't even talking about no great championship team they wouldn't have gotten beat nine times by the same guys man so i don't know if this, if this Laker unit, Bron and them don't want to leave a black eye on on the Lakers, uh, they need to figure this. They need to get, figure this out, man. They need to figure this out. And I was about to cuss for real, but they need to figure this out. And that's how serious this is in my mind. People are gonna be remembered for this, just like they remember for anything else. And you don't want that. Now, when you're trying to be the goat, now when you're trying to be the greatest, this, that, and the third. You know, Anthony Davis. I felt he was disrespected. He didn't get an opportunity uh, at being a finalist for Defensive Player of the Year. I thought he played enough games and he played great defense. But guess what? People looked at that team and they said, y'all ain't good enough. Now, Bam's team ain't better than the Lakers, in my opinion. Wimby's team definitely ain't better than the Lakers. Gobert obviously deserves to be there by way of the winning if you want to stay consistent. But I felt like that Anthony Davis was disrespected to no end. He should have been a finalist. But I'll tell you this, when people look over and they're trying to figure out how to vote and then they look over at you and they see you ain't never beat Sabonis, you ain't you you can't beat the Denver Nuggets. I promise you that's why you're not in that top three. I promise you that's why you're not in that top three. Yes, they disrespected you, but they had they looked at something. They saw a massive black eye over there. They said, yo, this guy has never beaten the, the Montes Sabonis. In 11 straight times, he's never beaten this man. And they look over at the Denver Nuggets. At the same time, he's got nine straight, eight straight losses to the Denver Nuggets. And we're supposed to be giving him an accolade? Nah, we're going to go with Bam. We're going to go with the, the new kid on the block, Wimby. And we're going to go with Rudy Gobert. And that's exactly what happened to Anthony Davis. He needs to overcome these two individuals. The Denver Nuggets and, and, and or these two teams. He got to beat the Kings and he got to beat the Nuggets. Next season, he got to beat the Kings, man. Or people go keep disrespecting you. It ain't about, it ain't just about you being on the floor. You got to win these matchups that you can't overcome. And that's been the problem with the Lakers. That's been the problem with Anthony Davis-led basketball team. And I'm going to say it like that. I'm going to say it just like that. So people understand where I'm coming from. You got teams that you can't beat, bro. It's unacceptable when you're in the level you are. When you can do the things that you can do on both sides of the floor, ain't no way in hell there's a team you can't, two teams you can't beat. A lot of people gonna put that on LeBron James. He definitely deserves a lot of count, a lot of what that has to do with. But somebody needs to start pointing that at Anthony Davis. You know what I'm saying? Bron ain't the only person on this team that's supposed to be a star. Coach Ham ain't no star in his role. Anthony Davis is supposed to be the leader of this team just like Bron is. And we got teams we can't beat while you're down there. I see him wear that three chain around his neck proud to represent the number that he wears on his chest. Brother, three represents can't beat Sabonis right now. Ain't defensive player of the year. One damn championship. People think you fragile, can't stay on the floor. Like, it's at some point in time, you got to look in the mirror and say, enough of this. Enough of this. Whatever it takes for me to get over the hump in these two areas or these three areas, whatever it is, that's what I need to do. I need to gain my respect. And it ain't just about doing the bare minimum. You can play 72 games, 78 games, whatever it is. Austin played 82. What's your point? You're supposed to play every game. 
What you really need to do is beat these teams that keep slapping you around, brother. What you really need to do is give somebody something else other than to say, yo, yeah, that's that's two years he ain't beat Sack. Yeah, that's two years he ain't beat Denver. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at Anthony Davis. I'm saying you play great ball. But at the end of these games, you be down, bro. That that That's why you're not getting the respect. So everybody points at it, bro, and that's cool, man. I'm pointing at AD today. For game two, I'm pointing at AD. You played great in the first half, and you started shooting threes in the second half. Stop changing the, the game plan when it's working. If it's working, just keep doing it, bro. All that stuff you were doing in the first half, the fadeaway shooting over Jokic, he was not stopping you. Why the hell weren't we doing that in the second half? Why the hell aren't we doing that down the stretch of these basketball games? You know what I mean? They're not morphing into werewolves, fam. They're not turning into 20 feet tall monsters. They're still the same humans. Denver Nuggets ain't changing. It's just how you view them and what you continue to do to them. So Anthony Davis needs to get over that hump if he wants the respect of all these voters, man. He wants the respect of these fans. He wants the respect of himself. You got to start beating crap that keeps beating you. I ain't pointing at it, Bron, today. Bron, know, he already know that. His legacy's already in stone. He could retire today. People gonna call him the GOAT. Anthony Davis, who do you want to be? Because <laughs> you're the guy who's in his prime. You're the guy that we look at and say, yo, he should be defensive player of the year. He's the guy who has the talent to be MVP but never had one. He's the guy people used to compare to Giannis and then he, that went away. Who do you want to be from here on out, bro? And don't tell me you just cool with playing 78 games and now I've gotten over the hump. Brother, this is not a participation conversation. This is a domination conversation. And quite frankly, you have more talent than people that they say are better than you. And you're getting dominated by people that you know you better than. You can do more on both sides of the floor than a lot of people who've won MVP. So what the hell are we waiting for, man? Play your best ball for 48 minutes. Don't give me one half and then don't come out of the second half with the same energy. I don't want to see that. If you dominated him in the first half, then dominate him in the second half. And make him react to you. And stay out of foul trouble. Stay on the floor. That's important. This is but this is Anthony Davis game for me. That's an Anthony Davis game. I I know Bron didn't shoot in the second half in the fourth quarter. He got to deal with that. But if I'm Anthony Davis, I can't wait for the forty year old guy to lead the way. I can't wait for freaking role players or some badass coach to lead the way. None of them people are good as me at what they do. None of them. I'm the leader of this damn team. I'm the one with three around my chest. I'm the one that's trying to lead the Lakers forward. Damn it, you got to beat the Denver Nuggets and you got to beat the Sacramento Kings when you see them next year. This cannot continue if you want people to look at you the right way, bro. We ain't waiting on nobody else. Not Austin Reeves, not D'Angelo Russell. I'm not waiting on Gabe Vincent or Torian Prince. None of them people are your equal, bro. They can't come together to be who it is you're supposed to be on the basketball floor. You're supposed to be dominating everything. You trying to tell me Rudy Gobert is a more talented defensive player than, than Anthony Davis? Nobody thinks that. Nobody in their right mind actually thinks that. I ain't going to mention Wimby because Wimby really is one of them. He's going to be one of them. But Bam out of bio at 6'9", he's supposed to be a better defender than Anthony Davis? Man, slap everybody who said that. But before you slap them, you acknowledge the fact that they have every reason to look at Anthony Davis and say, you know what, we can slight him because Sabonis slights him and Jokic slights him. And when he went up against the Suns, Nurkic slighted him. Enough. Game two is about Anthony Davis's respect. If he want to lead this team. He want to be the best player. People are slapping him around. People are not voting for him. People calling him soft. This is the game you come out and you remind us who you were in New Orleans. I remember who you were in New Orleans. 57 points one night, 52 points the next night, 58 points the next night, 45 points the next night. I remember that. A lot of people don't know that. I remember that. I had you on my fantasy teams. I know what you could do. I ain't seen that on this uniform too often. He needs to snap back into that. 
And the way he was playing offense in the first half, he was well on his way to that type of game if he would have played that way in the second half. <laughs> See, many don't know. Many have forgotten. Many weren't paying attention. Many were you're too young back then. I wasn't. I remember Anthony Davis. I ain't seen Anthony Davis maybe twice in this Laker uniform. He's been half of that dude he was in New Orleans, and he's been taking back seats to Braun. That is not going to get us where we want to go in this series. You got to get back to that New Orleans guy that spammed the hell out of that basketball, that dunked the basketball, hit his free throws, hit everything, and wasn't settling for three-point shots unless absolutely forced to. You know damn well you could have played better ball in that third quarter, Anthony Davis. That's what it really come down to. Don't be selling for no threes no more. Not on the night when you're killing Jokic. He can't do nothing but put a hand up and get scored on. Keep doing that to him. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I don't care how they voted. I don't care what them fans are screaming. I don't care about none of that. Shut the noise out and dominate game two. That is what I want to see from Anthony Davis. I ain't interested in what nobody else is doing. Not even Braun. Not today. This is an AD day. This is the game where AD gets his respect. This is the game I'm calling him out. BDL44, I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.